So let me get this straight. You want to create a black Mossad, a black CIA, or a black uh, FBI, or MI5. I'm using the word black because that's what the person addressed the, uh, the statement to me as. You have to be either severely delusional or devoid from reality to believe that you can create such an organization within America. There were three times you could have done it. But of course, like any opportunity, that door has already closed. As I said before, you had three opportunities. The first one was under Marcus Garvey. Now, I, I know Marcus Garvey wasn't the only one, but still, Marcus Garvey gets the credit. So that's to make things simple. I don't want to make this video too long. But you see, opportunity is a funny thing. I'm going to use this simple analogy. Let's say there's a job opening and they have about 3,000 positions available. But the window to apply is from April 26 to, let's say, May 2nd. Now you have all the qualifications for this particular position, but you don't apply for some strange reason until May 3rd. Well, at that point it's too late. The window has closed, okay? The door for that opportunity for you has closed because you choose to apply on May 3rd, even though the deadline was May 2nd. Opportunities are not gonna sit around and wait for you until you decide, okay, now I'm ready to do something. It's too late for that. It's too late. So under Marcus Garvey, you had the opportunity to do that. But I have to make it perfectly clear that even under Garvey's brilliant movement, it had all those people motivated. I must point out the fact that even though the enemies that were fighting Marcus Garvey, who were non-African, there were many African people who were fighting Garvey as well. Okay, so so many some, sometimes y'all got this illusion in your mind where I've heard the saying you guys use now of uh, people who sleep with pink toes and referring to people who have non-African spouses as if you, you can't trust them. But I want to let you know that a lot of times the people you're fighting against they know that, so they're gonna come and get the most radical ones and make them become the agents. Because I gotta be honest. A lot of us have a criminal background, either on what you guys would call paper, which means they're on parole, or been out of jail. So any little thing they can get, they can be tempted. Saying, "Well, look, okay, if you don't do this, we're gonna send you back to jail. We're gonna plant this on you." So now, you know, they become a bit wishy-washy. You don't know if you can really trust them. But see, you guys don't do no real digging, so all you gotta just hear what they say. Oh man, they yeah, they, they deep man. Oh yeah, you know, they they down, they they're against the system. You know, they hear what they said not really looking into the person's character so wait a minute man they're saying all this kind of radical stuff but yet they're still on the street 
Ain't nobody picked him up yet. Talking about killing these people and killing that people. Wait a minute, man. Hey, you still on the street? But you don't question anything because you, you, you want to hear things that make you feel good. Because we're into this feel-good type of rhetoric. You see? Second time you could have possibly created such an organization would have been under the Nation of Islam, under the original leadership of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. You see, but however, as you and I both know from history, and many of us know from history, the nation was heavily infiltrated, as well as Garvey's movement was heavily infiltrated with lots of agents. Lots of agents, as you would say, that slept with black toes. Oh yeah, it wasn't the agents, like I said, that you think would be the obvious agents. No, 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 no. They got the most decorated ones, you know, clean cut to be, well, in the nation of Islam, you have to be clean cut, you know. So they got the most clean cut ones they can find. But many of them were actually infiltrated, infiltrators for the government. Why am I telling you this? Well, it's, it's for a reason. You know, but I'm saying again, you, you had an opportunity to do something like what you were stating under the Nation of Islam. So that's the second time you could have done something. But currently the Nation of Islam, I, and I'm going to say some things, but I know some people are going to take quite a, a offense to what I have to say. And just see it from my point of view. I'm, I'm an outsider looking in. The current leadership of the Nation of Islam, I, I don't know where he's leading you to. To be honest with you, because all you hear is a lot of menacing talk and you know rhetoric, but I don't really see much of a result from it. I remember the Justice or Else march, and uh, I don't see much of a much of an or else. I'm just saying, I'm just was wondering. But what I see going on in the nation is the same crisis I see in African people worldwide. I see it in the Caribbean. I see it in Africa. And I see it. In any type of institution we have we have a lot of these i'm trying to use my words carefully and i don't mean any offense and i love my elders don't get it mistaken i really do but why is it that we choose to keep having people who are you know past their prime leading us i mean i don't mean any i'm really really trying to be real you know careful i don't mean any disrespect whatsoever but I'm just looking at this problem that we have where we have these people who are these people who are past their prime leading the movement. So you don't really have no real sense of change because if they don't approve of what the move to uh, any new type of new ideas, they hold on to what they know, what they're comfortable with. 
So I'm just wondering because I saw it again under the uh, honorable Elijah Muhammad. You know, he, he led, you know, he's old, he's still leading. I mean, that ain't good. And then they got Minister Farrakhan, he's in his 80s. I mean, like I said, I, I, he got some of your political of, uh, officials over here in their 70s and 80s. Like, come on, man. At some point, man, you got to say, you know what? I'm going to pass the baton. And you see it in Africa also. I mean, a lot of these older leaders and so forth. Again, I, I, I love my elders, so don't take it the wrong way. I'm just making a clear observation. You know, I love Robert Mugabe as if he, as if he could be my own grandfather, but he was in his 90s, man. At some point, you got to pass the baton and say, hey, man, you guys can do it, man. It's, you don't have to have this notion that you have to die in leadership. I mean, at some point, you have to realize that. And another thing I notice with the nation, again, I'm not trying to take any offense. I'm just an outsider looking in. You know, as, as the elder would say, um, you know, uh, I think his name is Pharaoh said that. I'm a spaceman. So imagine I'm a spaceman coming out to see this now. And I know this one here gonna really upset you guys, and I don't mean any disrespect at all. But it seems to me that there's a slight coloration problem with the nation. And what I mean by that is the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was a kind of light skinned brown brother. Malcolm X was kind of a light skinned brown brother. The current leader, Minister Farrakhan, is a light-skinned brown brother. I'm like, well, wait a minute, man. Doesn't have anybody that's uh, dark-skinned that's fit for leadership? I know some of you might be saying Khalid Muhammad, but he really wasn't leading. I'm just saying. I mean, I'm just, I'm just saying. So I'm just, just looking at it from that point of view. But I didn't mean to deviate too far. I just wanted to say that piece because that's been in my mind for quite some years now. And again, I don't mean no disrespect to anybody in the nation. I'm just pointing out what I see from an outsider. I'm not attached to it. I don't have any, as they would say, I don't have any skin in the game. I don't have no reason to be a uh, device. I'm just saying, seeing, I'm just saying what I see. Okay. But if you want to create an organization like what you were talking about, that was the second time you could have done it under the nation of Islam. done it was under the original black panthers now i don't have to go into much detail about the black panthers if you studied history you know what happened to the black panthers you know they were heavily infiltrated by agents and in many cases agents that slept with black toes because when the opposition comes to infiltrate these groups they come with people that you're at least so uh, suspicious about you know, the ones that, like I said before, are most radicals, the ones who look the part. Those are the best agents. The ones that say all the things you want to hear. Oh, yeah, yeah. Down with the system. Yeah, yeah. We're going we're gonna to bang on the beast and all that stuff. And in the end, 
All they do is bang their mouths. They don't do anything. Case in point, the young brother in Atlanta, Georgia, that supposedly committed suicide off the bridge. What are we gonna do about it? Make a YouTube video to say it was suicide, you know? What about the sister down in Alabama that was harangled, you know, to the point where the whole world got to see her, her, her breast exposed? What are we gonna do about it? We'll make a YouTube video about it. Some people protest, and I saw the, the, uh, the, the, the same police went to actually arrest one of the guys for protesting peacefully. What do we do about it? I, see, I already told you years ago what was gonna happen. It's gonna come to a point where it becomes normal, normalcy. If you remember correctly, I said that many years ago. Well, now we're at that point where it's just normal to see our suffering. And eventually, and for some of us, we've already gotten to the point where we, become, we have become emotional emotionally numb you see it and like yeah i see it yeah and some of you guys cover every story you can find oh yeah they got kicked out of the restaurant for this and this oh this guy couldn't use a coupon and this uh, his his white roommate i'm you know, using the words you all use can use, use the same very coupon okay 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 as i keep saying over and over and over and none of you guys want to deal with the real issues. What are you going to do about it? I'm not telling you to take up arms. That's a suicide mission. Some of you might call me a coward for that, but that's suicide. You can't allow the opposition to fully arm themselves with technology beyond your capability of even manufacturing right now. They got you outgunned outmanned out technology what you gonna what you gonna that's almost like fighting them with sticks and stones and they're using state-of-the-art laser guided um missiles and drones nerve gas that can go through the damn building where you got all your little bit of ammunition your two box of bullets inside your house and kill you inside your house without you even firing a shot or they could use robots to come in there and detonate I mean, what are you talking about? You have let them completely, completely leave you in the dust when it comes to technology. And now you're gonna somehow create some type of opposition? You're not wrapped tight at all. You are not bound in reality. And I can tell by your responses. Now I'm doing my best to keep my emotions in check because I'm, no, I'm a logic guy, you know? I'm, you know, that's me, I'm always based in logic. However, it's really hard sometimes when dealing with some of you guys because your, your level of ignorance is just beyond my comprehension, man. It's like, it's, it's over 9,000! <laughs> For real, it's just beyond my comprehension. How some of us can be so completely foolish. Nevertheless... The foolishness will continue, but under the Black Panthers was the last time you could have ever create such a system you're talking about. Are you gonna create systems that rival those of Garvey's, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and the Black Panthers in today's current environment? The answer is no. How, how do I know it? Well, it's simple. I look at your actions. In order to create those organizations, Notice the key word is organizations. Organize. Well, the first thing first is you have to be organized. You have to have Ubuntu. Got to have unity. You guys don't have no unity, man. What are you going to organize? The time is now. Man, it's 9 a.m. again. It's funny. It, it, been take, it take me damn a week and a half to make this video because every time I try to finish it, something else happened in the media. Something else and something else and something else. I said, you know what? I'm just going to keep waiting and see what happens. And sure enough, it's like you can set your watch to it. Some other conflict. Somebody get kicked out of the restaurant. Somebody got mistreated somewhere. And we still don't want to create our own. At all. It's like that's the black man's script. Now I'm using a word y'all know. 
That's the black people, not black men alone. That's the black people's kryptonite going to work. Oh no, I can't do it. Ah! I can't work for myself. No, I ain't gonna work. No, you can't make me. Like, just do it. Why so hard? Well, you need government. Well, many of you talk about, you know, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Did they have government back then helping them out? You talk about these Rosewoods. Did they have government? Hmm? What about Africa Town? Hmm? Did they have governments helping them out? See, y'all sitting and waiting for things to happen. Maybe if you start doing some things, maybe, maybe you can meet some, you know, some, you can network and you might never know. You can meet some people that are doing something. You know what? We can kind of funnel some money to you. But if you're sitting at home and you're rusty, dusty, saying what you can't do and you can't do and you can't do for self and you can't do for self, the same people now telling you that you can't do for self, they seem to have a YouTube channel, which is their YouTube channel with their name on it, and they're getting super chat super chat donations and stuff and isn't that a form of doing for self i didn't see the government gave them a grant to come on youtube i mean maybe, maybe, if i'm wrong one of you pointed out to me but as far as i know they are making the videos with their own money and spending the money to buy the equipment to get better video equipment better audio equipment and as far as i know that's um a form of doing for self maybe it's not maybe, maybe it's something else maybe in you guys mind is that's something else but i'm just saying that mm, I, I don't know in your in, in, in you guys insane world i don't even know what is actually real anymore what is fiction i, I don't even know anymore but sometimes i switch man the creators tick me out of here man so you know what i had enough man i know i've only been in 40 years man but i've seen enough if we're gonna continue down this path of ignorance, I'm not just talking about African people, I'm talking about people in the world, period. I don't know if I wanna be here no more. I can see why some people say, you know what, man, I'm gonna just take myself out, man, because this ain't going this ain't going right at all. If everybody around you seems to be stuck and stupid, you might say, well, what's the point? What's the point of being here? People can't see the, the, the ones and zeros as if they can't make up what's going on, let somebody break it down for them. But these are the same people telling you that they are so intelligent, they're so awake. You know, we are enlightened beings and I got my chakras right and I'm a vegan and I resonate in a different frequency. All this type of nonsense. Yet, these same people cannot seem to understand or comprehend the simple grasp of let's create our own industries. It's, it's great to be resonating at a higher frequency. But while you're resonating up there, you might want to create your own industries, your own food distribution plants, your own clothing plants. Hmm? But you're going to pop something off, right? You're going to get this revolution going. He who feeds you controls you. That's what it said, Thomas Sankara said. How are you going to pop off anything when they feed you? All you gotta do is, all they gotta do is shut the food supply down to you. That's it. The revolution is over. Many of us ain't got no food stored up. Bam, sure ain't got no water stored up. So what you gonna do? You know, we watch all these terrorist movies. What's the first thing to do when, it, when a terrorist takes over a building? Turn the power and the water off. Well, let's say it's a hot summer day and they choose to turn the power and water off in our revolution. Now you inside your apartment, your house, whatever, you ain't got no water, and it's hot as hell, you ain't got no AC. The revolution is over. Oh, well, well um, we, we give up, we surrender, we surrender. I mean, I know we at war, man, but I didn't know you guys were going to turn the water and the power off, man. Come on, man. You know we ain't got no AC in here, man. We ain't got no water. We can't flush the toilet or anything, man. Come on, man. I know we at war now. We at war. But I didn't know you guys were going to take it that far. The revolution is over within one hour. Hmm. But you guys somehow trying to convey to me and other people that you're gods, goddesses. Well, can somebody explain to me? Because maybe I'm a little bit slow. One time, I just want you one time, just one time, 
in any religious text where God needed the devil to survive? Just one, please, just one. Just one. I'm not asking for a whole lot. Just one. Where God needed the devil to survive. You can see it now. Hey, hey, Satan, man. Say, man, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna need you, honey. Come, come on, man. You know, you know, you know. I'm, I'm God, man. But, man, I'm kind of hungry, man. You know, I can use some water, man. Could you imagine that? I know, I know. People might get upset at me doing that, but look, if there's a God up there, and I believe there's a God, you think that's surprising to God that I just made that statement? Of course not. You tell me it knows everything, it sees everything. It would have known I was gonna say that long before I said it. Since that can't be blasphemy, it knows me, and yet I'm still here talking. Okay. So I don't know what kind of God you guys pray to, but my God knows me inside and out. So I'm not worried about that. So what am I saying? If you are such these gods and gods you can't create anything, isn't that kind of strange, man? I mean, I was going to leave this for a different video, but man, I might, I might as well put it in this video here. You wonder why some of your youth choose suicide. You wonder why. Because they're still connected to the spiritual realm you see and they can still sense that something is wrong with this world something is wrong with this society and the society means the people cannot have no society without the people they can still sense it and they're looking around desperately trying to cling on to anybody who can sense the same thing they sense and they can't find anybody including their parents they're struggling like am i the only one that feels this am i the only one that sees this you gotta understand when a person chooses to commit suicide that's a real serious choice man that's a last ditch effort like man i don't think nothing else is gonna work this is it for me i'm just gonna be out of here now i'm not referring to the guy in atlanta georgia i don't know that story i'm just talking about it in general because i've seen over the years many children of all different so-called races commit suicide and you gotta wonder like what are these little children of what, what are they feeling because they're still connected to that spiritual realm. And they can't understand why the adults can't sense what they sense. They can't feel it. They got the pain in their hearts. That nobody can understand them. I can't get their attention. So they say, you know what? I can't get their attention. I don't know what, next, what else to do. Well, I'm out of here. And when they go, now all of a sudden everybody's, Oh, if I had known, well, why don't you? Because you're not connected. You're too busy making a living. Too busy surviving. Something is wrong with the society. Where you can't even feel the pain of your own offspring. You can't feel their suffering because you're so busy making a living. And you all don't see the dots, man. You just can't connect. And why do we have to work like this? Why do we leave up to the system to raise our children? Yeah, we call the people who are so-called civilized, I mean uncivilized, living in those tribes who are half naked and stuff. We call them uncivilized, but yet they don't have any case of suicide amongst, amongst their people, amongst their youth. So who's really civilized and who's uncivilized? Huh? Think about that for a second. In this so-called civilized society, people committing suicide. Damn near every day, if you want to search, you can probably find it damn near every day. Suicide tops the charts over homicide in the top 10. I will say it again. Suicide is in the top 10, according to the CDC, where homicide is not even in the top 10. And you guys worried about homicides. What about suicides? All this is still tied into the same thing you say you want to create your own system. But how can you create a system when your people are hurting so much? They don't know what to do. You have people who are emotionally broken, spiritually broken, financially broken. How are you going to create a system with people like that? You got to nurture them first. How are you going to do that when you don't have any systems? Everybody's talking the same stuff and I don't understand it, man. Everybody want to just talk, but don't think. I'm a revolutionary. Do you know what the word means? Not the latest fiasco. And 
I don't even want. I didn't. I didn't even want to talk about this topic because I didn't self see. I don't even see the importance of it. Nevertheless, people who are supposedly so enlightened, so aware, so awake, and so spiritually connected, you can't see the trick. Kanye talked about slavery. Now, up until Kanye made that move, I mean, made that statement, what was going on in the media? That we were to, a lot of you guys are talking about the mistreatments from people who happen you now. What happened in Starbucks? What happened in the Waffle House? All of a sudden, now Kanye talked about what he said. Boom! Detour. Everybody focused on Kanye now. Completely forget about the mistreatment of African people in America. We're gonna focus on what Kanye West said. An entertainer, a singer. It's like what Malcolm X said. I told you a little while ago, these leaders that they call leaders, this included Lena Horne, this included Dick Gregory, and this included comedians, comics, trumpet players, baseball players. Show me in the white community where a comedian is a white leader. Show me in the white community where a singer is a white leader, or a dancer or a trumpet player is a white leader. These aren't leaders. These are puppets and clowns that uh, have been set up over the white community and are over the black community by the white community and have been made celebrities and usually say exactly what uh, they know that the white man wants to hear. And it is an honor, actually, that they endorsed Dr. Martin Luther King and uh, uh, were against the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. That's actually an honor. Now, when you say that they also, in this same Newsweek poll magazine, they, uh, I think the pollster said that he went into the Negro community and asked about the Muslims. And many Negroes whom he asked said, well, I never heard of the Muslims. Who are they? You know, this, this is the rank and file we're talking about. Oh, yeah. About now, now, when they got down to the rank and file, this was the answers that they got. Uh, this is equivalent to uh, the situation in Kenya during the Mau Mau uprising when many uh, frightened uh, whites in Kenya, Africa, would go among the Africans and ask them, what about the Mau Mau? And the African would say, I never heard of them. And the same white man who would ask the African this question and very naively believe what the African said, when he went to bed that night, he would lose his head. And usually the one who took his head was the same African who told him that afternoon he had never heard of the Mau Mau. Uh, except uh, in the Newsweek poll, they used Negro interviewers. You'll find that oftentimes Negroes are as much on guard uh, around Negro interviewers who usually represent the bourgeois uh, element of Negroes as they are on guard around whites. Uh, usually Negroes know that when this bourgeois Negro walks through the door, he is not doing something that he's initiated himself, but he's involved in something in which the white man is the absolute author of and has sent him to the Negro community for some information. And when they give that Negro some information, usually they give him the information that they want the white, want him to take back to the white man. But yet, you up in arms about what Kanye said? And some of you guys said you studied Malcolm? <laughs> this game is being played over and over right in front of your faces. And you still don't see it. But yeah, you guys are the intelligent ones. You're the enlightened ones. Kanye is nothing more than an entertainer, a puppet, paid to play his part. The emphasis is on paid to play his part. And you guys let him completely deviate where your focus is at. The mistreatment of African people in America to on slavery if slavery was a choice. You completely let him change the whole talking points and the media went, went along right, right with him because that was all part of the plan. And you don't see that. Completely derailed you guys. And you're going to be the same people telling me you can create a system where you can be so easily let off of your path. By one, not a whole bunch, one entertainer said one statement. And poof, you distracted. We're going after Kanye now. But you going to create a system? A black Mossad? A black MI5? A black CIA or whatever you... You are fooling yourself and you are highly 
delusional. Let me tell you something. For Africans in this country, you better have two things to survive. Unity and organization. If you don't have those two things, you can forget it. You waiting for the government to pass, pass, pass laws? Well, they're supposed to have laws in the books now. How is it protecting you? So yeah, you, you guys better stop playing these damn games. For those of you who choose to stay here, like I said, if you don't unify and organize, you can forget it. What you see happening is be more of the same. Except for Joe, it, it'll be actually, it's already happening. It's not just the Europeans. The Koreans treating you all well, day. Let, let me don't say the Koreans by itself. The Asians. You see what happens when you go into their stores? And I don't even understand that concept. How the hell you have somebody selling you your standard of beauty when they don't look like you? What type of fool are you, man? And I know that gonna hurt your feelings, but how the hell do you have someone selling you your standard of beauty when they don't look like you? Could you imagine you selling beauty product products to Asians? You think they'll buy it from you? Or anybody else? No. But somewhere in your deluded mind, you believe that it's okay. And you can create some system within America. Man, you all better stop. Man, whatever you guys are on, it's more powerful than Jim Jones stuff in um, Guyana. Way more powerful than the Kool-Aid. Way more powerful. Except it doesn't kill you. It just makes your brain completely useless. Your brain becomes a six pound placeholder. You don't even use a damn thing. They can tell you anything and you run with it and you believe it. Be it I'm the one that's seeing things wrong. I'm the one who's a coward. Cause I tell you, you ain't gonna fight this system. You can't let 50, 60 years go by and now you wanna take, oh, we, we ready to fight now. How? With what troops? What infrastructure? What you gonna do? Put the revolution on Twitter? Instagram? Facebook? YouTube? Who owns those organizations? Hmm? Do you own Facebook? Twitter? Instagram? YouTube? The answer is no. I mean, at some point, man. At some point, you got to be able to feel it. That's why I, I, I go back to the children. That's why they, they're crying out for help, man. And they're looking to the grandma, the grandpa, mama, dad, uncle, somebody. Help me. Somebody help me. The children them screaming out for help. Somebody help me, please, in this crazy, chaotic world. I'm trying to make sense of it, but I can't. Mama is crazy. Daddy is crazy. Grandma done lost her damn mind. Grandpa, we don't know where he's at. Uncle, auntie, everybody's busy. Busy, busy, busy. No one have time for me. The, the child, what am I supposed to do? Sit in front of this idiot box of television? Why they brainwash me consistently? With images I don't even understand? Huh? Go on the internet and see God knows what all over the internet with no filters so the child can see anything on the internet. And you wonder why they're committing suicide. You wonder why they go crazy. You wonder why they don't have no respect for you. They didn't came out that way, you know. The society, again, without the people, it can be no society. The society molds them. You are part of the society, so you are part of the problem. But we don't ever want to point the finger on ourselves. It's, just, it's white supremacy. White supremacy is the problem. No, you are the problem. You're just not brave enough to admit that fact. You're like an alcoholic who doesn't want to admit they have a problem drinking. Or any type of addict. But I'm the one who got a problem, right? Because I can see it. I can still feel it. See, I never lost that sense about me. That's why I can feel the pain. I can see it in the eyes. You can see the sense of hopelessness in these children's eyes. As they look to you, the adults, for guidance. And they find none. So you put them in a place of hopelessness. When I buy them everything they want, you can't buy love. It never dawned on you, huh? 
I got them all, the Xboxes and the PlayStation and the Jordans and whatever else they want. But all they really wanted was your love and your attention. And you couldn't even give them that. Because I'm busy. I'm busy making a living. I'm trying to give a better life for you. <laughs> the game is rigged and we don't see it. But you are so enlightened. Aware. Alert. I'm a vegan. I resonate the higher frequencies. I got my chakra and my kundalini energy and all this stuff you got. As this, as the old folks used to tell me back in the day, you are so smart, you're dumb. I'm gonna tell you all that too. You all are so smart, you're dumb. You got all this information, you're still dumb. You still haven't figured it out yet. You still haven't figured out what's going on. But, like I said before, a lot of your children can still sense it because they have not been exposed to society for so long, so they can still sense it. But the, as the longer they stay exposed to the society, the less they're gonna sense it because it's, the society is gonna beat them down and beat them down and mold them, conform, 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 be like everybody else, conform, conform, conform. And before long, they turn out just like you. Don't feel anything. Just busy, 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 busy. Chasing the next headline. Like a dog chasing a the car. Then one day the dog catches the car. And the dog doesn't know what to do. Because they never intended or never thought ahead of when I catch this car, what am I going to do? So they catch the car and like, okay, well, now what? So you figure out the problem of this race. Let's say, the, just the, let's say you figure out the race problem. Then what? You still don't have any institutions you still don't have any way to actually house yourself without somebody providing the housing for you or the food for you or the clothes for you to buy huh but you don't see that I tell you kids go to school get a job you know go to go to school get a good trade good 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 grades so you can get a good job but it never dawned to you wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute if we all went to school, nobody dropped out. We all go to high school, graduate, go to, well, finish graduate high school, go to college, and you have your commencement ceremony. And then you all got in the workplace. You would realize quickly that there aren't enough jobs for everyone. But you don't know that because, hey, a lot of us don't make it halfway. So you don't understand you have competition, not just from within America's borders. You got competition from all over America, not just across the border, Mexico, Mexico, but from India, from Asia, from Africa and other people coming in because America's important workers, the importing them. OK, so that's more jobs going to other people. That's why you have a lot of people on Skid Row living in tents in the richest country in the world. They're living in tents on the street. I see them. I know you. I don't care what city you live in, America. You've seen them too. You might try to ignore them, but you see them on the sidewalk begging you for money when you stop at the stoplight. We see them. All the time, you somebody roll the window up, man. I don't want to talk to them, man. You know, I just roll my window up. <laughs> you know, you, you come in a restaurant, wait them out outside a restaurant, fast food joint. You see them. You think they all don't have degrees? Some of them do have degrees. If you spend the time to talk to some of them, which I know some of you don't talk to them, they smell stink. I don't want to be around them. Mm -mm. I'm too good for that. All of a sudden, they're not human now. They're just they're something other than human. But you don't see the problem in the system. You see, I'm not going to go down that, that road. That would be too deep for you guys. Uh, I'll, I'll pretty much stop this video now because it's been on for long enough. But... As you know me in my videos, I talk way more than just one subject, man. I just, because I don't make that many videos. So, when I do, I have a lot to say. As they say in the Caribbean, when the storytellers came out, the wheel bend and the story end. In an all-out race war in this country, the blacks will obviously lose. Our best fighters have already been removed from the field of battle. Our would-be warriors are hardly more than brainwashed zombies who can be counted on to do their duty. 
Because I have understood the containment policies of this nation in its subjugation of a despised minority and the current abandonment of containment in favor of systematic annihilation, I do not salute the flag. I do not stand when the Star-Spangled Banner is played at public events. And I am certainly too mature to engage in delusional activities exemplified in the singing of We Shall Overcome. It is because, precisely because of my certainty that we as a despised minority in a racist land shall not overcome All right. that I have taken the time to come here tonight All right. and suggest a rational alternative to armed conflict and military defeat as the inevitable denouement of our unfortunate stopover in this decaying land. The last time I raised the question of an African future for our people on the continent of Africa, I was widely accused by some of my nationalist friends of having abandoned the struggle. Uh, that is perhaps the case. Before I am condemned again, uh, please permit me if you will to examine the, con the concept of black struggle in an American context. For centuries, the slaves and descendants of slaves in North America have been engaged in constant struggle, most often in response to the oppressive acts of a racist nation. With the exception of a few vaguely articulated cliches and slogans, the goals of our struggle in America are essentially undefined. Appeals for complete equality and the chanting of inanities such as we want it all and we want it now have added nothing to a rational discussion of goals. Let us not delude ourselves. The, 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 the struggle for racial justice in America has been and continues to be a defensive struggle designed to protect and defend illusory gains. We struggle to hold on to mayoralties of the major cities as state and federal budget cuts and state administered block grants assure their deaths. The struggle against the cuts takes the form of protest rallies which produce no concrete results. The criminal justice system is designed expressly to annihilate the young black male. All the statistical evidence and social indices support an inevitable conclusion. The struggle is being waged and fought on a daily basis. And victory, however defined, is not in sight. Nevertheless, the struggle continues. In the absence of clearly defined goals, if you please, the struggle is a farce. And those of us who engage therein are engaged in a farce. Unwittingly, to be sure, but a farce nonetheless. We have defined struggle as an end in itself. And one's self-worth is defined in terms of one's commitment to or contribution to the struggle. 
We make martyrs of our leaders who die in the struggle, and this is as it should be. But it misses the point. Struggle is not and never can be except for the mentally challenged an end in itself. It is rather a means to an end. Palestinians struggle for a state. Kurds struggle for autonomy. Black South Africans struggled for political control of their country. For what tangible goals do slave descendants struggle in North America? A piece of the pie? That, if I may, is an individual goal. A goal already achieved by a handful of us. But what are our racial goals in a racist land? To posit racial equality as a rational goal in a society that is fundamentally racist is to come dangerously close to charlatanism. It is to posit a goal that cannot be. It points us down a road that will be marked by nothing but struggle. There is, however, a different way of looking at the world and the place of the African in the world. The current wave of oppression and the reversion to a Darwinian theory of society, the survival of the fittest, will surely end with the final disillusionment of our people. At this point, responsible adults must have something more to offer than keep on pushing and we shall overcome. We are at the final crisis and we must make our people understand that the sun does not rise and set solely within the continental limits of the United States of America. They must they must at last begin to understand that our roots are not here, that we have a homeland, that our homeland is the richest and most thinly populated major land mass on the face of the globe, and that our destiny as Africans in America is to participate in the restoration of that unfortunate continent to its former status as a leader in arts, culture, and science.